Growing up, I knew I was meant to be world famous, though I wasn't sure how. When I was 10, I wrote plays that could be acted out by my younger sister and me, playing every character. So dialogues were yelled between actors from the closet while we changed costumes for the next scene. We tried to get my parents to watch, but they were not interested. I really got into acting and singing and was fully prepared to star in The Wizard of Oz, but I couldn't convince anyone to take me to all day long auditions. Then I won the big bucks in a lip sync contest with my best friend Adrian, five dollars. <laughs> Although I placed even higher the next year, I found it did not offer sustained income. Next, my dad taught my family and Adrian to water ski. As always, I took it to the extreme. I skied backwards, I slalomed holding uh, the tow rope with one foot, and I hammed it up so much that other boats would stop to watch. But then our old boat went belly up, and along with it, my dream of being a champion water skier. My next ticket to stardom, magic. While other girls had crushes on Michael J. Fox or Corey Haim, I was awed by mystery and intrigue. My biggest crush since I was four years old was David Copperfield, <laughs> the magician, <laughs> who was like 40, but he made the freaking Statue of Liberty disappear. I had seen him live when in a flash he teleported to the back of the audience near me and that night I got an autographed picture of him on a motorcycle. I was in love with him and also wanted to be him. So when Adrian and I were 12, I convinced her to take a class for kid magicians with me. She would have rather taken home ec, sewed an apron that said home sweet home, but she was perhaps a bit gullible in the way sixth graders are, and I was very persuasive in the way sixth graders who believe they can be world famous are. <laughs> now, magic does not come easily to anyone. It requires a lot of work. So we spent weeks poring over magic books, watching illusionists on video, and practicing. Again and again, we wowed our peers at the Magic 101 course taught by, taught by magician Bob a wizard who wore a cloak and was so wizened that he had to use binoculars to see our tricks. <laughs> As it turns out, he had been born legally blind. But with thick glasses and perseverance, he had, according to his biography, overcome his disability to become a renowned magic teacher, shop owner, and inventor of over 75 tricks sold worldwide. By the time Adrian and I graduated the class, we were the star students. Of course, I couldn't just do magic for fun. I had to hang flyers around the neighborhood advertising 12-year-old sorcerers in the night for hire. <laughs> Practicing on our families would be the first step in launching our magic business. So we planned a show at my house and one at hers. Our biggest challenge, my impossible to impress dad. He's impossible for many reasons. One is he's obsessive compulsive. He loves the TV show Monk because its main character has OCD too and solves crimes. Also, my dad is a control freak. He avoids public events and is kind of a bummer. Like he always missed his kids' performances. So I thought I could trick him into watching me by staging a show at home. Adrian had warned me that we weren't ready to perform for an audience. As usual, I didn't listen. We had already advertised our show with hand-drawn signs on the walls of the kitchen, and I felt the show must go on, even though we'd spent all day water skiing, were tired, and hadn't even had time for a dress rehearsal. The grand finale, though, would be seamless. We had skillfully combined four separate tricks to make up one big trick and had learned each part devoutly. My parents had not seen it. All they knew of the big trick was that we would waste a deck of cards and an orange every time. <laughs> 
A volunteer picks a card in an elaborate manner. She cuts up the card, keeps the corner as a receipt, and folds the other pieces into a bandana only because we didn't have a real magician's handkerchief. And then a series of presto, changeo, and she winds up holding torn up papers? But wait, when arranged together, they spell out, look in the orange. Conveniently, there is a fruit bowl nearby. Lo and behold, rolled up inside the orange is the original card intact except for one missing corner which she is still holding. Yes, I was destined to be a paid performer at birthdays and bar mitzvahs. So this show was our big unveiling. Our audience consisted of my mom, dad, and nine-year-old sister all sitting on our living room couch. My dad was wearing his usual attire, a tank top, dad shorts, and perfectly manicured 70s mustache. This was the 90s. <laughs> I stood intentionally blocking our huge TV to signal to my dad that this was more important than Quantum Leap. He wanted nothing to do with my magic class, including paying for it, so I had saved up my allowance. And now I was so determined to make him regret that he'd declared it a total waste of time and money that I lost sight of reality. In my opening, I foretold grand spectacles, black magic, and jaw-dropping stunts. But the first few tricks were underwhelming and not a good representation of what we'd learned in class. My mom and sister had already seen me do them before. And my dad, he'd brought his manicure kit and was clipping his fingernails over the trash can he had also brought. <laughs> he hates having to watch anyone perform. It stems from his having to endure church services while growing up in the Bible Belt. And in Vietnam, he and uh, other soldiers were forced to watch entertainment acts for morale. So anytime he's at a performance that he didn't pay to see, he complains bitterly about being a captive audience. I let him clip his nails, and I could only hope that Adrian knew my dad well enough to not take it personally. Then we came to a segment we'd never practiced and had only discussed once. Suddenly, it became clear why Adrian was so hesitant about our show. She had no idea how this trick worked. As she waited backstage, the bathroom down the hall, she pretended she was stuck. She jimmied the door. Uh, I can't open the door, help! My dad rolled his eyes and sighed loudly, which at least signaled he was still paying attention. <laughs> Trying to maintain composure, I asked my sister to help her. This only prolonged Adrian's embarrassment. She finally shouted, Jay, I need to talk to you. I left the audience hanging as I ran back and told her how the trick worked. When I reappeared sheepishly, I lost two things every magician requires, the interest and respect of the audience. <laughs> my sister was giggling at our screw up and my mom had a look on her face that said, well, I gave it a chance, but no. My dad had finished his manicure and had moved to his feet. <laughs> There was a loud clip and rustle as each toenail fell into the trash can. <laughs> Excuse me, please put that away for the show, I confidently said. Magician Bob had taught us to be authoritative with our audience. My dad said, without looking up, you made me a captive audience. I don't want to be here, so no. <laughs> Defeated again. It did not matter that we had done the tr other tricks well. The audience only remembers your mistake. The worst part was Adrian and I didn't perform the finale. My mom had refused to provide an orange that we could surgically remove the center of and glue back together with a card inside. So we did a couple more random tricks and said, well, that's the end of our show. Following the completely anticlimactic ending, I went to my room and bawled my eyes out for a long time. And so did Adrian, who had been such a good sport, because it's a special kind of friend who's willing to embarrass herself in front of your family. But this was mortification and despair. After working so hard, I had failed, 
And I regretted that I had a dad who laughed at my flyers because no one would ever hire a kid to perform at even a baby's party. I wanted him to be the dad who's proud that I earned a musical solo in Bye Bye Birdie, not one who boycotted all four performances because he was mad at the music teacher. <laughs> he wasn't like Adrian's dad, who one week later sat with her mom and siblings, excited to watch us and absolutely amazed by our finale. I picture her family watching us, like with popcorn and candy, and they had all kinds of fruit for us to practice on. I still have the Klutz Book of Magic. One day, Adrian and I will revamp our show. Years from now, when my dad is old and immobile, I'll make him watch us. <laughs> <laughs> Only then will he know what it's like to be a truly captive audience. <laughs> but this time, he'll marvel the card was inside an orange? Wow! He'll apologize for clipping his toenails during the most significant performance of my life. Actually, it wasn't my most significant. In my dad's view, that came 20 years later when I was in his favorite show, Monk. I was in scenes at a football game holding up a foam finger and a red solo cup. Awkward. <laughs> awkwardly pretending to dance when there was no music <laughs> and generally overacting. <laughs> and he thought it was the coolest thing I have ever done. <laughs> In that one act, old patterns were magically rewritten, pride was conjured, and past hurts underwent spectacular transformation. Ta-da! <laughs> That it was Jay Carroll.